Hey folks, it's Dave back in Studio C as I'm setting up to play the playoff series between the Colorado Rockies and the Philadelphia Flyers from 1977-78. It was a quick uh, best of three series that was over in two, though one game did go to overtime. Uh, so I'm going to replay that here as part of my next quick project. Uh, but a few people have asked about how I handle my lines and my line changes. So I want to do a quick video on that today, how I set it up. Now keep in mind, this is not a tutorial on how to play the game. This is just Dave's way of doing things. And we're going to call this version 1 uh, because it's kind of a basic setup, especially with the lines that uh, at some point as I get better with the game and more acclimated to the game, I'll probably want to set up some more um, uh, complex lines for the game, so to speak. So that might be a version 2 of it. But for right now, this is what I do as a beginner to make the line changes nice and simple, and then also uh, how I change lines in the game. And uh, all of this here is kind of a big uh, uh, compilation or a cornucopia, if you will, of uh, the actual game rules, home brews that I found on the internet, uh, results from the conversation with Mark Zarb. We had Mark Zarb who designed all this on the Digital to Dice podcast to check out that episode. And also uh, some of my own um, ideas thrown in. So it's a big mix of everything here that I'm using uh, in, in Dave's way of playing Apple hockey, okay? There's a few things I added to make it feel like hockey uh, rather than just a board game. But anyway, let's get into it. So first, setting up the lines, okay? So I got Colorado here, the Flyers here. Uh, a couple ways you could do it, but I'll show you how I do it. I do three lines, three full lines. So I got three left wings, three centers, three right wings, three left D and three right D. And I know that a lot of teams only go 5D usually, um, but to make it so much easier, I go three all the way across the board for each team. And what I do is every four minutes, I change lines. And I go from line one to two to three back to two back to one, okay? Uh, so in other words, you get line one starting the period and ending the period, so you get line one out there for crunch times, okay? As of right now, I don't have any power play or penalty killing units out there, okay? Just right now, I don't. Uh, I, I will be doing that in version two, I'll figure out a way, but for right now, just to make it easier, Whatever whatever the two-minute power play is, that's going to be the line on the power play and the line killing the power play. And I know, I know, but this is me being the basic guy, learning the game, just wanting to play the game and not have to get into the must and the fuss of shuffling penalty kills and power play lines. So that's how I do it. I run my three lines every four minutes. So line three is only out there for four minutes right now, and line two and one are out there for eight minutes each. And uh, so far, my stats have been pretty good with that, even with uh, the power plays and the shorthanded situations and the whole bit. Uh, I will eventually work in a line four, as I talked about, and, and get it down to 5D. But for right now, this is what I do. I just go stri straight up line changes. I don't have any power play or any shorthanded. Again, this is me being new to the game. Um, so what's kind of neat about having this mat is that I hit the four-minute mark, and when I change the lines, all I do is flip my cards over like this, and I have line two ready to go, and boom, you know, that's it. That's my line change. There's really no messing around. It's that fast. And then again, I'll flip for line three, and then I'll come back for line two, and then come back for line one. So when I end the, the period, it's all nice and neat again, and there's my line. So that's kind of how I do my line changes. In fact, on my score sheet, I have uh, uh, minute four, eight, 12, and 16 marked off so I know when to change the lines. So that's how I handle lines and line changes. Now, when it comes to doing the actual line changes, I do like to use this chart right here. This chart is really, really fun. This is one of my favorite, favorite things about Apple Hockey is the line changes on the fly, okay? So you roll your two dice, and if you roll high, it's an icing. If you roll low, then it's just a turnover, and if you roll in the middle somewhere, you get the dump and chase. All right, so let's just start right here. Let me get my puck. It's my puck. So let's just say that Colorado, all right, Colorado is going to uh, make a dump and chase. All right. So this guy, Spruce, has it for Colorado. And at some point, he gets the puck, and an X comes up, and that means the four minutes are up, and i got to change lines. So I roll my dice. If it's an icing, 
it's easy enough. 61 to 66 is icing. So I roll my dice. 61 to 66, it's icing. Face off in the Colorado zone. Everybody changes lines. It's easy. That's the easiest solution, okay? The other way is, if it's not an icing, if I roll 11 to 36, then what's going to happen is the puck is going to either end up with the opposing left wing, center, or right wing. So if Spruce rolls a 32, let's say, uh, it's going to be the opposing right wing. So he flips it up, he gets it out of the zone, uh, Leach has the puck for the Flyers, and I change the Colorado line. Then the Flyers have to change. The second team has to change. And they would do the same thing. Roll the dice. It's either going to be icing on a high roll, or it's going to just lose to the opponent, in which they can change the lines, or they have the dump and chase. Okay? So that's how I do the line changes. Now let's take a look at the dump and chase. So let's just say, again, uh, Spruce here has the puck for Colorado, and I were to roll a 46. A 46 is a dump and chase to the opposing left D. Okay? 46, opposing left D. So, I dump it in the corner, and it's going to be Bob Daly in the corner. All right? I change my lines, because, because Colorado is the first team to try to change, I change my lines. So, I flip it over. So, they've dumped it in, and they've changed. So now they get line two out. So they get a fresh set of legs. Okay. What I do in the corner now is you roll off the chart to see who is going to battle in the corner. So you roll the dice and determine if it's going to be usually the center or the right wing going into the left corner. So let's just say it was Ahern. Okay. So I roll the dice and Ahern goes into the corner against Daly. So I look at the C number, which is the, the real small text right there. So I look at the C number. And on the left-hand side, that's the offense. So he has an 8. Daly now is in the corner, and his C number on the right is a 13. So Daly wins that matchup easily and gets the puck. Now, there's a couple ways you can handle things. If there's a tie, let's just say they each had an 8. Okay? He's got an offensive 8 corner battle, and he has a defensive 8 corner battle. It's a tie. A couple things you can do is, one, ties go to the defense, or two, ties go to the home team. I tend to go, ties go to the home team, because there's not a lot of home ice advantage built into this game like other games. So I go ties, and if any kind of battle at all, whether it's a matchup, whether it's a corner battle, or in a slot, ties go to the home team at all times. Now, on this particular play, because Colorado dumped in and has fresh legs, and they're still on their, their line's still out there at the end of the shift. One optional thing that I've been doing is as I subtract one from the defense on the corner battle if this is the first um, attempt at a line change. So Colorado dumps it in, they change, they get fresh legs. They dump it in the corner, he's tired, so I would subtract one from the defense in the corner. Now he still wins the battle because he's a 13 minus one is a 12. So he easily wins the battle in the corner anyway. But let's just say he had an eight and he had an eight. Okay, now this eight becomes a seven because he's tired. So now the offense would win the corner battle and then you follow the procedures to see if there's gonna be a shot on net. So, and again, if he wins the battle and passes in front to the in the slot battle, I would subtract one from the defensive team because they're tired. Okay, so that's kind of an advantage to, uh, it's kind of realistic. You're at the end of the shift, you're tired. Now, let's just say this. Uh, they dump it in the corner, Daly wins the battle. So now the Flyers have to puck, but now they have to change. Colorado's already changed. We played four minutes, they've changed. So now they have to change. So they roll off the chart too. And again, it's either icing, uh, a turnover to one of the forwards, or it's going to be a dump and change in the corner. On the second part of the line change, when I dump it in now, and I go into the corner, now for the corner battle, so I'll change the lines for the Flyers now. Um, oh, I'm messing up here. Now, both teams have fresh lines. So in this corner battle, I would not subtract one from the defense, or if, if, if it turned into an in-the-slot battle for a shot, I would not subtract one, because they've already changed and they're fresh. So I'd, I would only use the minus one on the corner battle and in the slot 
if they had the tired lines out there. And again, that's it's, it's optional, but I think that's kind of realistic. Is that you know you, the team that dumped it in is fresh. They're hurrying in the corner. They're tired. But in this case, the Flyers are dumping it in on a team that's already changed, so they're fresh. So there's no uh, there's no uh, penalty on that at all, or, or deduction, I should say. So let me go back and show you. Now this is even strength. This is even strength. So let me show you what I do on power plays. And again, this is Dave's way. This is not anything official. This is just Dave uh, trying to make it more hockey realistic or feel like a hockey game. So we're playing now, and Colorado's shorthanded. Flyers are on the power play. If somehow one of the Flyer plays gets the puck after an X, which is a time mark off, and it indicates it's time to change the line. So the puck bounces over to Reggie Leach. Okay, and boom, we're at the four-minute mark. We have to change. What I do is I just change both teams right here on the fly. Okay, that's what I do. So it's almost like a, a stratomatic line change or, a, you know, whatever. Just everyone changes lines because I figure the offensive team uh, that has the puck that's on the power plays, they're not going to dump it in the zone. They're not going to just get rid of the puck on a power play. So Leach is going to get it. He's going to skate around, maybe go back into his zone, allow his team to change up, okay, to get a full change. But while he's doing that, the other team's doing the same thing. So how I envision it is that both teams change up on the fly. They're not trying to attack because they're trying to change. They don't need to stay on the ice because they're not attacking. And so it's a nice, clean line change. So that's the only time that I do automatic line changes is when uh, the team's on the power play. Now... If the team was short-handed, it's a little different, okay? What I'm going to do if they're short-handed, I'm going to roll off of this chart here. But again, there's no icing because they're short-handed, okay? And I really don't think that if they're trying to get off the ice because they're tired of killing the penalty, that they're going to go dump and chase in the corner. So what I do is I roll the dice here, and whoever it goes to just gets the puck. So if I throw it in and I roll a 41, and then I can see a 41 is... Again, opposing left D, okay? So I dump it into the corner to the opposing left D. I make my change here, okay? Um, these guys, um, there's no corner battle because they're just changing lines. And then I would allow these guys to change the line as well. So they would, they would get it here. They have to change. They would dump the puck in. They would make their line change. These guys would make the line change, and, they, and the power play team would retain the puck with no time off the clock. So that actually generates a little bit more offense. So I'm going to try that, whereas that, again, power play team has the puck, and we do a line change, change the lines. The uh, shorthanded team has it. They can't really skate around and change lines because they're getting chased, so they're going to have to lose the puck to the other team, and then we both change lines. And that's how I'm going to handle the power plays. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I'm doing. Also, when setting up my lines, a couple ways to do it. Obviously, here, if I take a look at uh, Philadelphia, if you can read Philadelphia on my chart here, you know, that, that shows you the lines. So the app will send you this. Or actually, you've got to print it from the Apple website. Uh, so it shows you the lines, uh, you know, left wing, center, right wing, and it shows you, you know, line one, line two, line three. In theory, that's what it's supposed to be. Again, they're not 100% exact, but in theory, that's what they should be. So a couple ways to set up the lines when you start the game. One, just go right down the line, what it shows you here on the roster, okay? Two, you can put together whatever lines you want. Maybe you don't want uh, Leach, Clark, and Bob Rell for the Flyers, you know? Maybe like, you know, I'd rather have Ross Lonsbury on the first line or Battleship Kelly or whatever it is. So again, when you're setting up the lines, um, you can either go by this or go by this. Or a third way is what I've been doing is going to NHL.com, finding the games that I wanted to play. And again, I did a video on how to find all the box scores from way back when. And I print out what happened, who played in the series, who played in what game. So that way there I know that Perron's in the net, and on the other side is Favel for Colorado. And then I have an idea who played in the games. And sometimes I'll even print out the actual game score and see who played in that game. And then I'll compare. So I'll get on the list and I'll say, hmm, hmm, Bill Bobber for some reason didn't play in game two. Maybe he was hurt. Maybe he was a healthy scratch. So, so now Bill Bobber comes out and I go to somebody else on the list. So maybe I bring in this guy Hill or Cunningham to play or something like that. So sometimes I'll print out the actual game that I'm playing see who was in the game, and 
if you're not in the game, then I don't put you in, even though you might be a, a number one or a number two spot over here. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do your lineup. I, I usually start here with, with who played. I reference this to see, you know, what order I'm going to put it in. But again, you know, in, in this game here, there's a couple of guys for Colorado that didn't play, and they're high on the Colorado depth chart here. But if they didn't play in the series, then I don't play them here. So I just another way I try to make it a little bit more realistic. Um, again, you never get a perfect as played with hockey, but you can get a little closer, you know, by, um, by seeing who actually played in the game. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. Uh, how I set up my lines, how I change my lines, the procedure for changing lines, and then also how I get my starting lineup in the game using a combination of the APA sheet, uh, with the actual who played, and then sometimes it's just who I want to play. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, I want to have a guy play on a team that, you know, maybe only played a few games, but this is the game he's going to play. A good example is Gilles Maloche for the Chicago Blackhawks. I am going to play a game with Gilles Maloche in net for the Blackhawks, and he only played a couple games, but I'm going to put him in and play a game for the Blackhawks because I, that's what I want to do in my replay. But anyway, I'm Dave from Studio C, getting ready for the Flyers and the Rockies, 77-78 playoffs. Talk to everybody later. Oh, and ID, it's been four days. Here's my video. Bye-bye.